What is up, guys? Today, we're going to talk about 10 things you shouldn't be doing right before a free dive session or even a couple of hours before a free dive session or maybe even the day before, because those things might actually stop you from getting the best out of your breath hold and the best out of your dive session. Number one, eating a heavy meal. Well, why wouldn't you be eating? Why is it a good idea not to eat before a free dive session? Because your digestive system requires a lot of blood flow. So all this blood flow that is going to your digestive system to digest all your foods, to process all these foods, could go to your vital organs like your brain and your heart, which makes you hold your breath longer. So if you hold your breath in a fast state, it's easier to hold your breath. Also, if you go diving on a full stomach, besides not being able to hold your breath as long, you just don't feel that well, you know. It's not a good feeling to have a heavy, heavy stomach when you're upside down, because when you're free diving, you're upside down, right? And all this food is in your stomach. So most free divers, they free dive on an empty stomach. And even if you're not going into the water, but you're just holding your breath, empty stomach is always better. And if you can't really feel well on an empty stomach, you might eat a little bit, but for sure not a heavy meal. Number two, drinking alcohol. You don't want to drink alcohol the night before and certainly not right before your free dive session because alcohol, well, it troubles your mind and it impairs your vision. Literally, um, you cannot assess a dive as good as when you are sober. So you might be over uh, ambitious when you are a little bit drunk. And apart from the um, mental aspects, it's just that your body is processing all this alcohol. And once again, you want your metabolism to be as slow as possible. So don't eat food and don't drink alcohol or even just juices. Anything that makes your body process nutrition, you want to avoid as much as possible. Also, when you are intoxicated or just a little bit of alcohol, the way your body deals with oxygen is very different. So you might not be able to assess a dive as good as when you are sober. You might just react differently when you have been drinking a little bit. So don't do that. Number three, intense physical workout. When you have been going to the gym the day before or even before a session, your body is, well, processing the whole workout, right? So when do you grow after a workout is when you recover. You do not grow, your muscles do not grow when you're lifting the weights. You are growing after you lift the weights, when you sleep, when you recover. So this process of recovery requires a lot of energy. All that energy could be used for a longer breath hold. So if you are in a state of recovery after a workout, then there's a lot of oxygen and energy that goes to recovering instead of going to holding your breath longer. Basically, you want to do the least amount of activity and eating before um, a dive session. Number four, taking stimulants. You might think, well, uh, what if I drink a coffee or a Red Bull before a dive session? Will I feel more alert and better? Well, again, your body will be processing this. So uh, energy drinks, they, con they contain sugars. So, of course, you need to process the sugars, the carbs. And uh, coffee is caffeine. So then your body will be dealing with the caffeine. All of this results in a higher uh, heart rate. Uh, which is the opposite of bradycardia. So in free diving, in breath holding, we want bradycardia. Bradycardia is a lowering of the heartbeat. When you are consuming coffee or energy drinks, your heart rate is going to go up. It's the opposite of what you want. Number five, diving with ear or sinus pain. Now, this is an interesting one. When you feel a little inflammation already in your ear, but you cannot really assess the situation fully, you don't really know what it is exactly, it is better to stay out of the water because a little bit of inflammation on dry before you dive can be aggravated while you're diving. So problems with um, ear barrel trauma or even um, yeah, other kinds of all kinds of problems uh, related to the ear, they might have their origin in a little problem before the dive already. So I know it is very difficult to say no to a dive session when you're all geared up or when you're traveling to a dive destination and you only have like two weeks of diving. You want to dive every day. I get it. But believe me, most of the problems, and I recently had a talk with a subscriber of mine who said he had a perforated eardrum, and he kind of knew already before he started the session that something was going on with his ear. So avoid problems. If you feel there is something going on with your ear, just stop the dive session or don't go at all and um, wait at least a couple of days. Number six, diving with a cold or other illness. You know, free diving and holding your breath it puts a lot of strain on your body. It's a physical and mental 
um, yeah, difficult task. So after breath holding, after diving, you have to recover. So you need to be at your best. If you're not at your best because you have a cold, because you have some other illness, then you're already starting in a deficit. First of all, your body will react differently to a dive. So you don't really know how you're going to react when you're sick. And second, you will have to recover even more. So when you do multiple dive sessions, uh, like, like one day after another, you will get exhausted. You might get even more sick. So when you feel you are sick, just stay out of the water. Once again, I know it is difficult to say no to a session, but on the long term, this will absolutely benefit you. Only go diving when you feel 100% um, uh, fit. And uh, about colds, you're, uh, you might have um, mucus in your airways and um, that uh, inhibits um, um, a better equalization. So sometimes the fact that you cannot equalize has got nothing to do with your technique, but simply by the fact that you have a cold and there is mucus in your sinuses or in your um, um, airways and you cannot equalize because of that excess of mucus. So then basically there is no point at all in diving when you cannot equalize. Number seven, being dehydrated. So um, when you go free diving, you will lose a lot of um, liquids. Um, so you need to hydrate yourself. So most free divers, they go to an open water session with a bottle of water. It is always good to um, add um, uh, electrolytes to your water. Um, many uh, places they sell uh, bottled water that is already distilled purified water, which is the opposite of mineral water. So when you drink mineral water, it contains minerals and your body needs minerals. But purified or distilled water is basically dead water. It does not contain those minerals. So when you add on electrolytes to water, you are basically enriching that water with um, salt, with potassium, with a lot of uh, minerals that you need. So be sure before you're diving, you drink a lot. And if possible, you take your bottle of water to your um, dive session. Because if you become dehydrated again, your body will react differently. You will get tired more easily and then you will react differently to your dives. Number eight, not getting enough sleep. If you're tired, you're not in an optimal state, and then you cannot relax as much. So you need to be fit, you need to be relaxed, you need to be 100% well rested. So before a dive session, it is best to sleep uh, eight to nine hours, depending on how much you sleep on a regular basis. But for sure, do not be sleep deprived. Um, all of this for safety, of course. When you've uh, slept only five hours and you're used to sleeping eight to nine hours, it's a whole different mindset, first of all, because you know you're sleep deprived. So this will stop you um, from um, relaxing fully. And also, you, you just simply react differently to diving deeper. Your equalization will not be the same because you're not 100% relaxed. Your breath hold will be shorter. So for safety, um, to know how uh, deep you can exactly go to, to assess the situation, you need to be fully rested. All of this uh, comes down to the same, of course, um, not eating, not drinking alcohol, sleeping enough. So um, you need to be in a 100% fit state. Number nine, and not checking the weather and uh, water conditions. So uh, yeah, sometimes uh, you wake up in the morning and you're like fully motivated to uh, go to your uh, dive school and start a session, but um, well, <laughs> you haven't checked uh, the weather conditions. There might be a lot of current, which makes the dive session dangerous. Uh, there might be a lot of swell, so uh, big waves and free diving is just difficult when there's a lot of waves. You want the water to be as flat as possible. Maybe it's just too cold. Maybe it's like really cold, really cold water and your wetsuit is not thick enough and you're just going to shiver. And then there is really no, no, no point in free diving. So you want all the variables, all the conditions to be as optimal as possible. And number 10, ignoring dive safety protocols. So this is a no brainer, of course. Um, don't be, um, don't be more courageous uh, than uh, you should be. Don't be a Rambo. Don't be a superhero. Always dive with a buddy and dive within your limits. And diving within your limits, that doesn't mean that you cannot try a deep dive. Diving within your limits means that you are responsible and you um, assess the situation and you be honest with yourself. And when you start feeling tired, you don't do a deeper dive anymore. So you need to be honest. Um, and this is 
this is very difficult because me myself in the beginning when I started free diving, I was always telling my instructors like, yeah, yeah, I'm feeling fine and everything is cool. But deep inside, I knew that I was already getting tired. It's a human thing, I think. But free diving teaches you to be fully, fully honest with yourself. So you have to assess your feelings and your emotions and uh, act upon them. And that is how you dive responsibly. Peace in every breath.